For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Mark Warman. I own Graveyard Cars. We are a Mopar only restoration shop in Springfield, Oregon. We have a television show that has aired in prime time for over 12 years. We've created 226 episodes and we air around the globe in 30 different countries. I'm the only person that's ever been named to Mopar as their brand ambassador. And our reputation for being the best of the best is in every corner of the world. And that entire journey began right here on North A Street in Springfield, Oregon, on that spot of land right there underneath this mighty oak tree when I purchased my 1970 Dodge Charger. I was with my friend Andy Crandall at the employment office. I believe we were both 15 years old. I was standing there at the landing. I looked a couple of blocks over and I could have swore I saw a car. Back in those days, we loved everything that was car. I pointed the car out to him and in his classic put everything down negative way, he said, Cod Warman, that's a boat anchor. And whatever, it looks pretty cool from here. And I could not tell for sure, but it had that front bumper that I knew had to be Mopar, at least I felt it did. I walked over, I knocked on the door, up to the door walks Butch Peterson, later to become a very good friend. So he walked me out there, we went around the car, it was a 1970 Dodge Charger. It was burnt orange, but you couldn't tell it under that soot. It was a white vinyl top, and you certainly thought it was a black vinyl top. Now, originally the car was 383 two barrel, but it had a 318 out of a 1974 Plymouth Roadrunner. He even had the exhaust tips on it off of the 74 Roadrunner. That crazy car actually started. He says, I would sell you the car for $475, which is exactly $475 more than I had. Over the course of the next year, I picked up an extra paper route, that's the one that I got from Royal, traded in my 1971 Honda motorcycle that I had for a 1967 Chevy Impala, traded the Chevy Impala for a 1970 Toyota Corona Mark II four-door, sold that car. Finally, I got enough money to buy the car. I remember the day I went over there, I had Royal with me. Went in the house, laid the cash on him. He pumped that gas pedal a few times. It fired right up. We hopped alleys with that car because there was no plates on it. All the way back over to 14th Street. Mom was so excited. She was so happy for me. I just remember that day. We'll always remember that day. Royal and I got some Ajax, a big pot, and some washcloths. And after hours of scrubbing that top with Ajax, it was beautiful. It was bright white. The paint wasn't that old on it because it had been in an accident and Butch had painted the entire car just a few years earlier. So it washed up and cleaned up and was so beautiful. One of the most wonderful stories I had from my mom was in her last days, we were remembering that day. She loved the idea looking out that window and seeing me out there scrubbing on that car. And she could tell the passion for the first time in my life. I was truly, truly in love. That is the beginning of what became Graveyard Cars nearly half a century later. Beneath the fog, behind the rust, sometimes they come back. There's only one internationally recognized Mopar master, Mark Warman. Joined by his friends, family, and dream team, the Ghouls. Nobody wants to take on the stuff that we take on. Reviving the past. 100% untouched survivor. Resurrecting the icons of American muscle. We are the Shaolin priests of Mopar. Uncovering stories. It's the baddest car we have here. And restoring dreams. The most iconic muscle car on the planet putting cars back where they belong. On the road. Here we go. Beyond a passion. Oh, that's wild. One man's obsession <laughs> with Mopar perfection. This is Graveyard Cars. Today is the day, the epic journey of restoring my 1970 Dodge Charger begins. Been waiting about 35 years to do this car. A few years ago, you saw that Royal and I came in here in a 1970 Dodge Charger, it was a green car. We were gonna restore that one. I could not bring myself to restore that car. 
to become my car. For the simple fact, it was way too nice. That car deserves to be put back together all original. Look at it. It was an all original paint car. It had the original engine, original transmission. Yeah, it was a 318 and yeah, it was green. All those things make it maybe not so desirable, but I have to be true to myself. That car was a peach original car and it needs to be put back in the original condition it was when it left the assembly line. I would be a hypocrite if I took and cut it up for myself. I wouldn't do it for a client, so why should I do it for myself? So upon being convicted, that's what led me to buying this car. This is a 1970 Dodge Charger. It needs everything. It's mostly parted out, but it does have a dash bin. It does have a title. It does have the things that we need to be able to make a car out of it. There's not much left on it. What is there is rotten. If you look at the hinge pillars, the floors, all that stuff's completely gone. Quarters are gone. This thing needs everything, but that's okay. I'm the undertaker, right? This graveyard car, this is what I do for a living. I'm going to bring a car back from the dead. Is that funny to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as I was saying, there's a slight little bit of surface <laughs> rust right here. Classic, Mark. That's classic. What's your problem? <sighs> surface rust? Are you kidding? This thing is rough from top to bottom. There's not a salvageable part on this car. I think Will's jealous. Jealous of what? Je it's a nice car. Where's yours? I never had a 70 okay, charge. Okay, that's right, until you took mine out and destroyed it. First thing Dougie and I are going to do is to remove the windshield so that we can get access to the bolts that hold the dash in place. Then we can remove that, and we'll remove the AC heater box and get it sent out to be restored. So folks, the name of the game here is cut the rubber gasket. If you know you're gonna replace it anyway, cut it off of there. And then you can pull that windshield out once you make a cut all the way around. Got it? Windshield out of this mother biscuit. Why are you pushing, why are you doing this? What? Well, people don't want to go blind. It, it's already broken. Well, it doesn't mean you break it more. <laughs> I mean, it makes, makes it a lot easier to take it out. That's how the pros do it. There you go. <laughs> don't damage the paint. What paint? First thing I want to get out is that dash so I can start building it out this weekend. I just set it right there, it's fine. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> the dash assembly removal is a matter of the five screws across the very front of it. Then there are two anchor bolts on the side that we loosen up. That way we can just roll it down, lift it straight out of there. That gives us the access we need to the heater box. And the heater box is one great big, we call it a suitcase. It has the evaporator core in it, the heater core in it, the blower motor, all of the controls is inside that box. That's a very complex piece. And that's why I want to get started now, getting that out and getting it restored. Go ahead and take that out your way. Careful of that duct. Yep, got it. So many pieces that are so hard to find. Let me grab that third doubles and show them what we're working on here. What I'm going to do this weekend is I'm going to put every single component that goes to a 70 charger dash, exactly like the one I had, in it. The charger that Mark had picked out before was perfect. It was a solid car. It would have been a very easy car to turn into what he wanted. But like typical Mark fashion, everything's for sale. So he finds a buyer, sells this car, I don't know how much he made on it, and then drags in this rusty boat anchor that needs everything, but it was free. So that's gonna be the car that we do. I'm going to add the dash speakers, because I can, because I have them in another car. A rear fader, because I wanted one, but I couldn't have one because my dad was dead. And of course, the air conditioning stuff. I told everybody that I'm going to build a duplicate of my high school car. There are things I did as a kid that I would never do for a client, but I did it then and I'm doing it now. So the easy thing is getting that car disassembled. The real hard work begins now. Coming up. Mark moves forward with an interior recreation of his first Mopar. My car had a crushed velvet tuck and roll interior that Royal actually was involved in. But will Royal remember the right fabric? So I don't remember that the colors would move so much when you turn the velvet. And will Marty, the newest addition to the team, be able to perfectly duplicate the custom seats from Mark's cherished past? 1978, that's when the last time I saw seats like this was. And in an aftermarket build of her own, Mark's daughter Alyssa fires up the crew 
to go custom or go home. Are you thinking black or red? I think black. Red. What? But is Will's characteristic defiance going to stop this project in its tracks? It's going to be fun. When Graveyard Cars returns. Last season, I went down to Cottage Grove Chrysler and got a great deal on a 2009 Dodge Challenger. Don Jones owns the dealership. He's a really good friend of my dad's and also a client. So when he found out that I was down there looking for a car, he got on the phone with me and he made sure that I got into the right vehicle for the right price, because I was on a pretty tight budget. We're gonna do everything we can to take care of you on that car. Nothing more exciting to see you in a red Challenger. Not only did he do that, he volunteered to help me get aftermarket parts for my car. I was telling the guys I wanted to put side pipes on it and we slower the front end, raise the back end, okay. do that kind of stuff. So now that all my parts have showed up for my Challenger, I am so excited to grab Josh and Will so that we can go around the car, make sure everything showed up correctly, and then also get their feedback on what they think I should paint the parts. So just to recap, we got rear window louvers, yep. quarter window louvers, yep. we got the flares and the rims, Yes. and then we got the rear diffusers, halo lights, side markers. <laughs> rear bumper lights. So okay. you, you didn't have to do that. Okay. And then we got the front bumper with the inserts. Yes. Do you guys know what this is? Are you thinking black or red? Ooh, I think black. Red. What? I don't care what color I gotta paint these parts. Only thing I care is that when Mark sees them, he's offended. Okay, did you see these? I'm really excited about these. Yeah, those are gonna look great. Go around the little rings, go around the headlights. And I think they change colors. Yeah, yeah I can put any color I want. So there red. There you go. Yeah, see, you red. Know? I mean, I am so excited about these. This is probably one of the coolest things I'm putting on the car. I agree. Have I, you I'm, ever seen these on the well, newer yeah. cars? Well, no, not on the newer cars. Not a bunch of them, at least. But no, that is nice. this is exactly how they were back yeah. in 1970. Right, that's why we got it. And yeah. The only difference I is this is going line, red. You know? No, I think we should keep it black. Do you paint cars? <sighs> this is going to be fun. See? I don't know how much help I am. There we go. Let's see. Oh, that's gonna look so cool. Oh my Ooh, goodness. I love it. The that red looks, match is really good, too. That match is really good. Oh, Will was thinking good. he might have to repaint that, but. I don't think so. I like it. You like it? I do. Okay. I want to see it in the sun, but I think it's gonna be okay. So there's a little alignment peg on the top, and then okay, I see two the long studs. black one there. Yeah. Let's just kind of align everything. Well, okay. Step back and check that out. Ooh. Oh, that's gonna be cool. That looks I so love good. it. I can't wait for it to be red though. Yeah. That oh. is gonna really bring it all together with the hood. Oh, absolutely. When do you wanna get these pieces on the car? So when do I need to make sure they're painted for you? If I could get those by tomorrow afternoon, oh, really? that would be awesome. So, okay, yeah, no problem. So you'll be able to get them on oh, for absolutely. afternoon? Yeah, cool. I am okay, so Okay, I'll ready. go talk to Will, make sure you can get those painted, but I'm sure it, shouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem. Cool, thank you much. I got a huge problem. We gotta have a little event down there with you, cousin Dougie and Will. I told Don that Will would cut his hair in order to get this deal through. To top it off, and you're the only one that can get this done. I need Will to cut his hair off, at least down to manageable level, because I think we could get a huge television audience on that. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I can't get Will to cut his hair. All right, quick catch up on my chargers. Doug and I got the dash out of it. We sent it out to the disassembly rack. It's been disassembled, now setting over on the rack, waiting to get dipped. That's the important thing to get done. Meanwhile, in the background, I'm working on all the other parts for it. One of the first things I'm working on today is the interior. My car had a crushed velvet tuck and roll interior that Royal actually was involved in. So I'm having Royal and Dougie, who also has an involvement back in those days, working on figuring out what material to put on and what the pattern was. Okay, so this is the seat, one of the two donor seats for my charger. Oh, cool. Isn't that a wild pattern though? Would have yeah, been. I've never, I don't remember seeing. It's a uh, 70 Sport Satellite, this blue tweed fabric in insert with a white banding around it. The yep. car was power windows. It's been a beautiful car, white vinyl top on it. Must have been a top of the line car because it's oh, I think it double was. inserts. Probably a Triple lot more inserts. than a Roadrunner back then. Yeah, plus, yeah, you got 
One pattern, one pattern, one pattern. Very unique. Anyway, very unique. None of that matters because this is what I want to show you right here. I got the bottom to it here, if it matters. I don't know if it does or not, but we'll just set it there for fun. There we go. So Mark brought me in today to go through the colors of the seats, and since I was involved in the in the original car back in 1978, I was working for my friend's mom, off and on whenever we needed gas money, we'd go over and work for her. You remember that you did this little insert right here, this little insert right here. Uh -huh. That's what we took out and we duplicated it with tuck and roll. Sweet pea sewed it up, you tore yep. the seats apart. Okay, so do you have any memory of it? Well, yeah. What I need to do is I've got three samples. These are the closest things I could find on the internet. What's crazy about these is every direction you turn them, they change colors. Yeah, yep. that was the thing with Crux <clears throat> Feldman. It, it's just wild, right? But I've done my best. I know which one I like the best for it. But Royal, you were there. You, you're the guy that helped do this car. And you remember how it looked. So online, this one looked the best to me for a match. How does that look right there? It's just shiny from here. It's just shiny, right? Yep. Turn it pink. sideways. Almost pink. Almost time. pink. Yep. Okay. Every time you turn it. Yeah. Because there's a face to them, right? There's a, a pattern. Yeah, there's a direction. This side, it actually doesn't look terrible, but it looks... From here, it looks about the same color as that. Uh, same brown. Yeah, yeah. same brownish red. Right. So I don't remember that the colors would move so much when you turn the velvet. So you have different angles, it shows different colors. And I didn't realize there were so many shades of orange crushed velvet out there either. And then this one, it looks even darker. Peach. Right. Yep. Right. It's peach. Yep. Okay. yep. So then there was this one that I thought for sure on the catalog looked great. Pumpkin? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Even wow. lighter. Lighter? Yep. Can't hardly do that. Okay. What do you think, Royal? Half and half? Uh, yeah. But it's way a... too pumpkin, right? Yeah. yeah. Bright yeah. orange? That's looking better. It's but... still too bright. It's still, right? yeah. It's not the right shade of orange. Right. Okay. Now, Royal, back then you experimented a lot, but you would say in your mind that that's probably it? Yeah. I believe that's about the closest. To to this color. To this color, right. And even then, I think, I didn't know there was that many shades of orange Well, then, yeah, velvet. just look however you sew it up, right? Boom, well, boom, just boom. the three different. Oh, yeah, and just those three alone, I mean. Yeah, I do not remember all those colors flipping like that. I know they've got a direction to them, but I forgot how you see it from different angles. It changes to totally different colors. Okay, we have the velvet picked out, which is perfect. I'm going to order a bunch of that. I'm gonna work with Marty one-on-one, -on -one, making sure that he sews the pattern correctly the way I want it. But I think the very first step is to get with Marty, tell him exactly what I want, have him go ahead and sew up the seats, and then we'll get Royal back over, disassemble the seats, and install the new material. This is such a neat milestone. I can't believe here it is. The last time I did this was 1978. It is 2023. I don't know what that math is, but that makes me damn old. Still to come. He is duplicating the seats that I had when I was a young feller. Marty's metal is tested when Mark charges him with recreating the custom seats in Mark's very first Mopar, a 1970 Dodge Charger. 1978, that's when the last time I saw seats like this was. But when matching the velvet from Mark's memory, will today's materials cut it? Nowadays, it's hard to find much of a selection of velvet material. Meanwhile, Alyssa's pet project creates tension in the shop. You know, when she doesn't get what she wants, she beats you down. I don't know what else I could have done. I've tried everything. Will Alyssa's surprise for her dad have unexpected consequences? You seen that enough, looks Will. really cool. Coming up, when Graveyard Cars returns. This is Bizarro World from Seinfeld. After Chrome Dome Spaceman and myself picked out the exact orange velvet material for my seats, I got together with Marty. For those of you who may have missed last season, Marty is our in-house upholstery guy. Marty worked for Stan's Upholstery his entire adult life. He's a phenomenal technician when it comes to doing upholstery work. When Stan's closed down about a year and a half ago, I approached him, we talked about it, made a deal, and he came to work for us, so now, we have our own in-house upholstery guy. And, it, and it's fantastic because in the old days, if we needed a vinyl top put on or a headliner, if we had some seats that needed to be done or whatever, we had to load the car up, drive it over to Eugene. Now, all that's gone. 
we just pull him from whatever job he's doing. He's doing everything from disassembling cars to he's doing upholstery. He does all of our headliners, vinyl top. He's kind of a jack of all trades, so we really love having him. It's really critical on this. There's so much what we call color flop, different directions. It was important for me to show him hands-on what direction the material needed to go and what the distance on the pleats were and what the depth of the pleats were going to be so that we could duplicate my original set. Being the consummate professional that he is, he actually sewed me up a chunk of it and I looked at it and signed off on that. That way if I don't like the new stuff that he's doing you can say but you signed off on it. So first thing we need to do before we start cutting is um, put some timing marks on this so that I can be able to sew this back in. We want to make sure that we get it back in straight. He is duplicating the seats that I had when I was a young feller. 1978 that's when the last time I saw seats like this was. I'm just going to replace this pattern part with cloth, and so I'm not going to be cutting apart the whole seam. I'm just going to be cutting apart this one seam. See, you can hear the you can hear the stitches. So, with some experience, I know that I'm not cutting a hole in a vinyl. You don't you don't want to cut holes in the vinyl. The upholstery guy, he's the unsung hero. He didn't get the glory like old Willie does. He spends hours tedious cutting little threads separating panels, sewing new panels together, checking them, double checking them, triple checking them, pulling all the thread out and doing it again. Mark originally had what, what he called velvet in his car, and this is pretty close to what an actual velvet would have looked like back then. Nowadays, it's hard to find much of a selection of velvet material. I think it's kind of an outdated type of material just because it didn't it didn't hold up to the sun really well and the fuzzes would come out of it and stuff anyway this is a a newer version of what velvet would have been in the 70s it takes so much patience to do upholstery work correctly and have it end up really really nice at the end of the day it's just important how much time it takes to put stuff like this together to do upholstery work right a nice even coat of glue on there you be careful not to puddle too much glue on the top of this material. On the back of this material, you can see the wet spots where it gets big spots. And if you put a puddle on there, it can actually soak through and you'll be able to see it from the other side. So don't get too carried away with your glue. definitely want to glue this down pretty good because when you start sewing it will start creeping around and crawling and then you'll wind up with wrinkles and not good. So when you're at a show next time you see everybody oohing and on over the beautiful paint job. Forget the painter. That's the easy lifting. Everybody else did the hard lifting and Will may not like to admit that that's his problem. In this case the heavy lifting to get my interior retro 1978 all the credit goes to Marty the upholstery man. There's my number one painter. That's hey, right. look what I got for you. I see that. <sighs> Bumper and the flares, huh? Yeah, so these are all going red, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And it's getting kind of close to you leaving, but you're gonna shoot them before you leave, right? No, no. What I, do you? I can't just stop what I'm doing, plus I leave early on Wednesdays. What? Okay, well, do you mind, please? staying and paying no, him, only because I, I told Josh that they'd be ready for him in the morning. You need to quit like promising people I thought you I could do it. it, I don't. No, I'm not painting this today at all, or tomorrow. It'll be painted before I go home on Friday, promise. Are you serious? 100%. Come on, you're the best no, painter, there, there, you're the number lot, one. You could just knock this out. This is a walk in the park cars, for you. A million things to do. Who cares? I'll have this painted by Friday, so Josh can come in Saturday and put it together. Okay, whatever. Well, let's talk about your haircut. There's nothing to talk about. Yeah, there is. What? I didn't want to have to bring up the haircut when he was already mad about me promising him to get the paint done tonight, but I have no other choice. My back is against the wall and we have a deadline. Okay, we really, really got to talk about it for real. Okay. I know we were kind of like joking around before, but it's serious. Like I really promised Dawn that you'd get a haircut. Why do you do this? Why would he you tell Josh I'm gonna paint these tonight? Why would you tell Dawn I'm gonna cut my hair? You gotta stop making Because I know you Why can do it. Why not ask me? First of all, the paint Why thing. Why not talk to me first? You were nowhere to be found. I, I'm here every day. We're, you take three hour long lunches no, though. I, don't. I can't I work find through you. Lunch. I can't find what you. you? Okay. I, work, I work through all my lunches. No, so what? I come Since in when? For, forever. That's not true. Listen, okay. Alyssa's just like her dad. You know, when she doesn't get what she wants, she beats you down. Mark does the exact same thing. 
at the end of the day, she hopes that I'm just gonna give in. But I'm not cutting These will be ready Friday when I go home, they'll be painted. Okay, fine. Josh can put them on Saturday. Your promise to Don Jones, five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, I'm not cutting my hair. So whatever what? you have to do in a, like Alyssa world, what do you mean? go talk to Don. So now I'm in a real pickle because I have this car, I made a promise to Don, and Will is not gonna cut his hair and he made that really obvious. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Sister to brother. Yeah. We're family, yeah? 100%. Okay, I'm in deep okay? I'm in big trouble because I promised Don that you would cut your hair for, for the event and he shaved $10,000 off my car. So if I don't, I don't wanna go back and tell him you're not gonna cut your hair. That's messed up. Well, what's messed up is doing that deal without talking to me first. So it was you're gonna in have to figure it out. the heat of the moment. Talk to your dad. I didn't. Talk to your dad. He has no hair to shave. What are you talking not about? No one hair, cares about that. About the money. Just go to your dad for Maybe money. Maybe he has enough back hair, but no one wants to see that. <laughs> I'm not cutting my hair. If I paid you 10 grand, would you do it? I'm not cutting my hair. There's nothing. Nothing. Not cutting my hair. You can call Don and get it all figured out. Hey. But I'm not cutting my hair. No, seriously. No. No. Will. No, Alyssa. Will. Alyssa. We really no. can't argue. I mean, this is no. serious. I, no. It's not a joke. No. I feel like you're treating it like no. a joke. No, wait. Hey, hey. What am I supposed to tell Don? I'm not cutting my What would you tell Don? I wouldn't make promises that you can't keep. I believe that we are warned in Proverbs 19.9 about this very scenario. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will perish. That's not me, that's the big guy. Hey, don't you think your dad should cut his hair? Normally in this situation, I would ask for my dad's help, but I know he's not gonna help me at this point. So either I pay the money, which I don't have, or the car has to get repossessed and go back. All right, so today we're gonna fix a little mishap we had with this. After Will painted the bumper and I started getting it installed, we f ended up finding out that they shipped us a 2015 Challenger front bumper instead of a bumper for the 2009. So the main difference is gonna be the headlights on this. So to get this fixed, we ordered some 2015 headlights and today I'm gonna be doing the conversion to go from a 2009 to 2015 headlights. I've never done anything like this before, but it does seem like a really easy process. I think I gotta add one extra wire and then do a quick little plug and play wire harness kit. All right, so now that those headlights are out, I'm gonna go ahead and route a wire across to both sides, and then we can uh, go ahead and plug in our adapter wire harness. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just let that hang in there until I get everything kind of in place so I know where to zip tie that up out of the way. Make sure I have enough room for all the other wires to reach and be able to get those headlights in easy. So these parts here are super cool. This is a good old plug and play adapter kit for the 2009 to the 2015 headlights. Pretty much plugs into the headlight, the blinker, and then that wire I just ran for the power. And then that just plugs straight into the 2015 headlight and then we should have a perfectly working headlight. All right, that went super easy. Now it's time to grab those headlights and bolt them in. All right, so that went in really nice. Man, I love how it plug and plays. Super excited to see these once they're all fully done. I'm kind of happy with this accident. I think it's gonna end up making this car look so much nicer. I can't wait till you guys see these headlights on this thing. So I have to go call Don Jones and break the news to him that Will's not cutting his hair. I've done everything, Will will not budge on it, and I am dreading making this phone call. Hi, uh, can I please speak with Don Jones? Hi, Don. This is Alyssa, uh, Mark's daughter from Graveyard Cars. I'm doing really good. I love my new car. Oh my gosh, it turned out so beautiful. Have you gotten to see a picture of it? Well, I'll have to send you a picture. It looks really, really good. 
Yeah, actually, uh, I took my family down to the coast a couple weeks ago, and it was so much fun to drive. The supercharger is amazing. Feels like you're flying there. I don't know if you've ever taken a trip to Florence, but it's the perfect road to test out a car. So we had a blast. So thank you again. I absolutely love my car, and thank you so much for your help and giving me a great deal. So after getting on the phone with Don and exchanging pleasantries, uh, the first thing he asked me is, when is Will coming down and cutting his hair? Of course. Well, that's what I'm actually calling you about. I have tried talking to Will, and there's just no way he's gonna cut his hair. Like, he is dead set on not doing it. Don is not happy, and I don't blame him. I made this deal with him. I didn't think that it was gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, about Will not cutting his hair, but I can tell you he's not happy. Yeah, I told him that that was like part of the deal and why we're, I was able to, you know, get the aftermarket parts and stuff. So, no, I did try. I've tried everything with Will. I mean, I, I tried to bribe him. I tried to actually give him money. He said no to that. I tried to beg him, guilt trip him. I offered to babysit his daughter forever. And he said no to all that. I even asked him if he could make one of his sons cut their hair in place of him. And he said no. I don't know what else I could have done. I've tried everything and he is dead set on no. So finally, after an eternity of silence. Are you there? Don tells me just to bring the parts back to the parts department. Well, as great of an idea as that is, there's just a small problem with that. I mean, yeah, we, we could do that, um, but just, Hypothetically speaking, what if the parts were already painted? Oh no. But what if it was done, what if it was painted by the number one painter in the world? Would, would that make a difference? Oh no, okay. So if the paint's a problem, are, are the holes in the fender a bigger problem? Look you guys, I am really nervous. Dawn's not happy and I don't know what he's gonna do. When I went out there to check on the car earlier, they had some of the parts on the car and that was earlier. So I'm, you know, they, they probably could possibly be all installed already. Okay, well, I'm game for any idea. So just when I'm at the end of my rope, where I'm about to suggest I shave my own head or cry, either one, guys can't stand it when a girl cries, he comes up with a great idea. Well, that sounds amazing. I would love to do that with you. That would be a blast. There's a reason Don is where he's at in life. He's a very smart man, and he came up with a great idea that saved the day. I think there's a huge market for this. I think that people love these cars, and not just the way they come originally off the showroom floor. I think that people love the second day aftermarket parts. I know that my dad doesn't love it, but there's a lot of people that do, and that's what you guys used to do back in the day. Don suggested we partner on this car, which I think is an amazing idea. So we're gonna sell it, take the profits, pay off the aftermarket parts that are on my dad's account, the rest of the profits of this car, we're just gonna put it into the future car. We're gonna buy another one and do the same thing. So this is amazing. You guys stay tuned. I can't wait to do a Hellcat. That's the first one on my bucket list. So this sounds amazing. I am so excited. Okay, but there's just one thing, one thing. You need to be the one that tells my dad that those parts are on his account because he would murder me. Historically, there's been a few instances in the past where I've given my dad reasons not to trust me. I have spent a long time building back up this trust and there's no reason for it to get ruined now. So, you're, so you'll call him for sure and let him know? Thank you so much, Dawn. This has been so much fun. So bottom line is, I turned what could have been a disaster into an opportunity. And I hope with this opportunity, I can power the future second generation of graveyard cars. And for the record, that's what my dad would do. So he can't get mad at any of this. He taught me this, and you know what he loves to call me, the fruit of his loin. So I'm finally gonna live up to that name. Coming up, will Don remember to stick to his side of the deal? So just please promise, promise? And what will Mark say when this next gen challenger is revealed? Cool, finally. Will the historical recreation of Mark's custom velvet seats come off without a hitch? There's certain things that are hard to get out of velvet. Or will his choice of upholstery be a flop? When Graveyard Cars returns. So I think it was probably a Saturday morning, and I know it was in the summer. 1979, I believe is about right. 
Doug called me up. Rooster, we used to call him because he had red hair like a rooster. He says, hey man, you okay if I borrow your wheels tonight? I want to take Sam to the movies. Now Sam is his future-to-be wife, whose real name is Sandy. Nobody knows why he called her Sam, but he called her Sam. It's fine. He wanted to take her to the drive-in movie. What drive-in, you ask? Great question. I believe it was a double feature with The Jerk and Meatballs, which explains a lot. Anyway, he wanted to use the car to take Sandy out to the drive-in, so he says to me, you can borrow my Honda 750. It was a pile of crap, but he thought at least I'd have something to drive while he used my car. Now, on my first pass with the 750, I was cruising out Main Street, heading to my Uncle Wayne's, and he was going to feed me some beers, and I was cruising down about 38th and Main, and there's some chicks on the right-hand side of the road, so what do I got to do, right? I got to give it a little gas, crack that throttle. So I crack the throttle open. It sticks wide open, Wide open, 100 miles an hour, screaming engine. I fortunately had the whereabouts to reach down and shut the key off. As soon as I shut the key off, the throttle returned back, turned the key back on. We were all back in business again. That was one of three times that I almost died that night. Second time was when I left Uncle Wayne's house a little tipsy. I hit some water on the road and it almost went out from underneath me. And then the last time was I did one of those toad things from American Graffiti when I was pulling it into my carport. I think I forgot to pull the clutch in or something, and I went hopping all the way into the wall. That's the good news. The bad news is, the next morning is the first time I see my charger. Doug brought it back, just like he said, took the bike. All's great. The inside looked like that movie Twister. The turn signal handle was busted and hanging by a wire. The horn button, which just screws on on the Dodge Charger with a sport wheel, was missing in action, completely gone. I don't know what they did with it or why they would need to, but that was gone. Every wire I had strategically placed for my Craig 8-track up underneath the dash were completely ripped out and hanging down on the ground. And there was a bizarre substance inside the car, which I won't go into. But my point is, I was doing him a solid and in exchange for it. They defiled my beautiful 1970 Dodge Charger. There's certain things that are hard to get out of velvet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lay it on me. Okay, Dad, I am so excited for you to see the car, okay? I made a few modifications to it, but I really think that you're gonna like it. It looks sick. Okay, right, Will? Right, Will? Yeah, it looks great. He helped me out. Yep. So the whole team helped me pick out some of these things, <laughs> and I can't wait to show it to you. And just, to, hey, I wanna remind you that when you buy a car, what do you do? You go and you change sell the it, wheels and tire. No. Nope. Oh, and you in go the old and days, I did. Okay, you don't sell it. You get new wheels and tires. You drop it down. You do all those Quit things. Quit selling okay? it. Let me look. What do you think? This is everything. So this you is. Like. <laughs> we got brake lights modification. We got spoiler. Spoiler. Hey. What do you think of that? Uh, rear window louvers. Damn it. What, what do you mean, you? damn it? I like oh, it. Already? Wait, what? I like it. Hmm? No, you don't. This car well, looks minute. good. What are you surprised about? You told me. What? I think it's great. What's great what? about it? Well, I like I like every. I don't like. I'm not a fan of this butchered thing. Yeah, I don't nobody, know what this is. Mm. But what? I mean, yeah, I, I take a look at this car and I'm thinking, look at the rear window louvers. They okay. look great on there. The quarter window louvers look good. It, oh, you did the flares. What about yeah. the, no, look at the lights though? They're the good. lights yeah, aren't bad. Kid. Yeah, the lights what do you aren't think? bad. You like I these? I kind of like them. Yeah. I know Mark better than anybody on this planet. He was supposed to hate this car. It's different. It's what just a little different. You know? you know, we do so many things inside the box. It's kind of like nice to. You. Well, you no, know, what you I'm just know. making sure he likes them. Knock one outside the box. Huh. See in the wide body kit? See it what I'm looks saying? like a red eye. It looks like a Hellcat. Yeah. That looks good. Look, I like the wheel. You know, I actually like this car. I could see us building a next edition for some of the younger people out there, the ones that don't appreciate these beautiful cars that we do, making some really cool, kind of like a Mr. Norm's Edition Challenger. I'm surprised. These? I like the wheel. That's that not... looks good. The louvers on the quarter window? Well, the louvers. Great. I knew you'd like the louvers, but the wheels? Oh, this is, this is great. I can't catch a break because for some reason, he loves the thing. Every part of it. We did some modifications around the front, too. I can't wait to show you. I got a little surprise for you. Can I pace myself here? <sighs> Is it against the law? Remember I'm... when Mickey was having a heart attack oh, in Rocky go. 3? He was on the table. Can I, can I just catch his breath? Is that against the royals or something? Can you I need to catch you? your breath over this? This is Bizarro World from Seinfeld. This is a new generation, fool. Will. Whatever. 
Okay, so I'm excited to show you the front because I got a little special treat for you, okay? I am so glad my dad likes the car. I really didn't know what he was gonna think, so I was so surprised to see that he actually likes all the aftermarket stuff I chose. Plus, it's gonna make it a lot easier when the parts bill for the car comes in, and my dad sees that. Oh, I mm -hmm. like the carbon fiber. Of course you do. No, that looks <laughs> good. The scoops. Oh, you put a Hellcat Red Eye front bumper on it. Also, with I, the spoiler. That looks really good. Do you have good. the remote for the headlights? I don't. Come on. I don't even know. You're supposed that to looks have really, it. Really, really good. Huh? <laughs> tell you once in a while I, I wonder about the fruit of my loin I was thinking the other night I was talking to Suzanne her mom and I said I wonder if 23 and me test wouldn't clear some stuff up you know what I'm saying What's what that? is happening what do, you, what do you think brilliant right I don't think that's gonna work why not is that supposed to be like Mr. Norms but, yes exactly I knew you'd get it well but I get like, it. but like warming like Mr. Worms you know it's like our thing yeah I don't know if everybody's gonna get that but what else would it <laughs> mean? Ah? He hates lights that's going to send him over the top. <laughs> lights? <laughs> there we go. What do you I mean? like these lights. These look great. These look fantastic. Sir? Actually, this is really cool. He loves those too, so I, I just give up. Can't now, this I might do on serious. my truck. That I'm not sure is ever going to quite catch on. Why See, not? I think it's... Well, let me tell you about ninth grade. Hey, here <sighs> comes Warm Man. Where's Warm Man? It's warming. There's not two M's in the middle of it. Exactly. I'm not going to have the whole world We saying, need to take it Is back that a Mr. Own Worms it. car? Is that a Mr. It, Worms right? car? Does that have the Stop crawling it. option? <laughs> do you see how... Do you see the different colors and he how they likes flash? Them, okay? Look at the... That's so cool. I no, love you that know so what? much. I'm okay with this. This is all right. I'm so happy and I'm excited that my dad likes my ideas. I mean, I would really like for this to be the next generation of graveyard cars. I'm younger, I feel like this is like the new generation coming forward and I'd love for my dad to support that. Good job, Will. Good yeah. job, old buddy. I that like worked, it. That worked out just. I think I like this car. I think I like that rig. I oh no. I, well, hold on, I hold on, wait. Oh, there's can more. You stop it? Well, there's more? Look He's at those lights. You've seen enough. You've seen that enough, That looks Will. really cool. Whatever, I'm going home. <laughs> Look at that, is that beautiful? Oh, this takes me right back, man. I should have done this years ago. It's got the tuck and roll velvet inserts with the original burn orange. I mean, how cool is that? This is my day, I'm telling you right now, this is my day. Got a next generation of challengers coming along, got my seats ready. See, this will motivate me to get a lot more done on the car. So this is it. This is good stuff right here. Good to betray. That should be on a headstone or something somewhere, maybe an overpass. It's good to betray. Oh, like this just. <laughs> oh, look at this just came in. Stones collection of eight tracks. Somebody stole my other one. So, <laughs> I got more. It's only rock and roll. My day. This is what you do. You take it in. You enjoy it. All right, I don't care about that bill. That bill. That bill. What the f Alyssa!